Hello everybody, we have been discussing uh, shift register. In this class, we shall uh, consider certain application of shift register. So, these are the few things that we shall have a look. So, the first of all, uh, what we see is uh, as one application of uh, shift register is parallel to serial conversion that we do through shift register that can be used for converting a parallel stream of data that is getting generated. For example, in some process say 8 bit data is generated, samples are generated which is coded encoded by 8 bits. So, that is generated one sample means 8 bits are getting generated and it needs to be transmitted to some other place. Okay. So, one option is to have 8 transmission channels. Okay. So, that uh, at the other side those 8 bits will be appropriately collected, but having those 8 uh, uh, wires or 8 ch channels uh, is a bit costly. Okay. And if uh, the data rate with which this is generated is such that we can make a parallel to serial conversion and quickly we can at a higher rate we can uh, send it to the other side and there we can collect it and convert through a serial to parallel conversion, serial input to parallel output uh, that kind of uh, shift register. Then we have a uh, this uh, data, it be data appropriately received at the other side. Okay. So, this is one thing that can reduce the cost of transmission by converting parallel data to serial and having a serial uh, communication okay, between transmitter and receiver. And of course, we need to have a appropriate protocol to find out start of the data message or the information and the stop of it. So, that next 8 bits again appropriately be picked up. Okay. So, the issue here is trade off is with the time that the rate with which you generate and the rate with which you transfer uh, with which you transfer is uh, re transfer rate need to be as many times more depending on number of bits that is getting converted. Clear? So, this is one thing that you can see on reduction of cost. So, parallel to serial and then serially it is pushed out okay, through a shift register. Next, we can use shift register to introduce time delay and the input data stream somewhere here IC 7491 we have already seen. This is say B is the control input okay, when we are keeping it at high then whatever is the uh, input at A. right? Uh, so, at that time uh, sorry when B is at a low okay, whatever is the input at A we have to go by this truth table. So, whatever is the input at A that is getting transferred to the output okay, after 8 clock delay. right? So, that is IC 7491 we can have 4 bit shift register then it will be after 4 clock delay. So, the same uh, variation that you see over here. So, that will also be available here is not it right and this clock the clock time period multiplied by number of flip flop units that is there in the shift register will be giving you the total delay between this input and the output and that will give you the time by which the binary data stream is getting delayed. Okay. So, if the clock is of time period is of 1 mic microsecond duration, then by this arrangement we will get 8 microsecond. If there are 4 shift four flip flops in the shift register, it will be 4 microsecond. So, and if the clock time period is say 2 microsecond, in this case it will be 16 microsecond delay. Is it clear? So, how you can uh, you know have a clock uh, generated which is of different time period? One uh, convenient option is that of using IC triple five. Okay, so triple triple five timer is very uh, much used, and this is a in a stable uh, multi vibrator mode in which R A and R B through R A and R B this capacitor gets charged, for which the charging time is zero point six nine three 
multiplied with Ra plus Rb, these resistance values and capacitance. Okay? And for discharge, discharge happens like this. So, discharging time is 0 0.693 multiplied by Rb into C. So, total time period is like this. So, with appropriate choice of Ra, Ra Rb and C, you can uh, fix the T value time period and accordingly the delay can be introduced. Clear? Right? So, next uh, we look at application of a shift register in sequence generation. Okay? So, here we are thinking about we are uh, that a particular sequence will be generated repetitively. Okay? So, there could be an application where we are looking at a particular pattern coming say 3 times or 4 times which cannot be random. So, basically that serves as a pilot or a header of something else to follow. Okay? In a random message somewhere a pattern like a particular pattern may, may come, but it is getting repeated number of times it is unlikely, it is relatively unlikely. Okay? So, that could indicate that certain events are to follow or just after that. Okay? So, there could be other applications as well for a sequence getting generated uh, repetitively. So, for that we can think of a shift register and a shift register like a 4 bit shift register over here. See it is loaded with 1011 okay, initially and after the output of it is fed back to the input of it the way you see here. And if you now uh, clock uh, it then what will happen? This one will go out right this one is going out and after that this one will come out and this one is getting fed back fed here. After that 0 will come out and after again another clock one will come here. right? So, another clock so this one will come up. So, this is the way it will keep circulating and this pattern 1101 will keep gen getting generated. Is it okay? Instead of 4 bit if we have got a 8 bit uh, shift register and say we have loaded it with a 1001010 right. So, again the output of it is fed back as input of this one. So, 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 1 it will it is getting generated. So, one cycle is getting completed. So, another uh, one will the next cycle will start with another 0 and this particular pattern will get repeated. Okay? So, with 4 bit you can get 4 bit pattern. 8 bit 8 bit pattern okay but if you say uh, in some case you are loading it with say 1011 again 1011 so what will happen of course 1011 will come uh, in one cycle of 8 twice so basically you are generating a 4 bit pattern okay so if you appropriately load it then you can get n bit pattern out of a n bit shift register the way we have configured it is it fine so that is what has been mentioned over here. Now, comes sequence detection. There also shift register can be useful. Okay. So, by sequence uh, detection what we uh, what we mean is that identifying a specific pattern from the incoming mid string. Okay. So, here this is the serial data in the bit stream that is coming. Okay and which is made to go through a shift register. Okay? And this shift register is used for the pattern matching sequence detection. Okay? And the sequence to be detected we can store it in another register. Right? So, for example, in if we want to detect a pattern in the incoming stream 1011 we can store it over here in a register. Otherwise, we can connect it to VCC for 0 we can connect it to ground 1 again to VCC and 1 to ground. So, that is hardware. Okay. But if we want to change the pattern that we want to detect then again we have to physically disconnect and connect this VCC and uh, ground. Alternative is to use a register like this. So, we can load the register with a another uh, 4 bit number which will be detected for a, a different occasion if so required. Okay. So, that is the advantage of having a register in, in, uh, in place of hardwaring the 
bit values that we want to uh, detect. Okay. And here what is happening? So, look at a particular case the outputs uh, outputs of this uh, uh, bits that are to be uh, detected they are made to go through a x naught gate each of these are going through a x naught gate x naught gate you know in, uh, uh, at the output indicates equality of the input. So, if 0 0 and 1 1 then the output will be 1 okay. x naught if 0 1 and 1 0 the output will be 1. So, x naught is just opposite of it. So, when the input is 0 0 and 1 1 then the output will be 1. So, that means it is actually uh, giving the uh, logic for equality equal whether it is 0 0 or 1 1 in either case the output will be 1. Okay. And all these 4 bits when they are equal these AND gates output will be 1 indicating a, a match or detection of the specific sequence. Okay. So, the example in this example at this point of time 1011 is to be compared and we have got 0111 in the uh, incoming string which is stored in this uh, shift register. Okay. So, what we see 1 and 1 this 1 and this 1 it is compared. So, it is generating 1 this 1 and this 1 compared. So, this is generating 1 now this 1 and this 0 will give you 0 this 0 and this 1 it will give you 0. So, this and get 1 okay. then this is 1 there is 2 or 0. So, the output is 0. Next what happens this 1 gets in. Okay. So, the what will be the uh, modified values of this shift register because it is getting shifted as a whole to the right. So, now this is 1 this is 0 this is 1 and this is 1 is not it. So, all these now x naught get having same you know uh, equal uh, values 1 1 here this 0 0 over here 1 1 over here 1 1. So, all of them will give you a output which is 1 and the aggregate output will be 1. So, that is the sequence is detected. Okay. So, that is the way we can make use of the shift register where the incoming this bit stream will pass through a shift register. Okay. Next we can see use of shift register what is called getting ring counter. Okay. What is a counter? Counter keeps count of a particular event in this case the clock trigger in this particular example, okay. but it, that event that trigger can come from some other place also. So, when it reaches a specific number we say the count of something has taken place. Okay. So, if we say uh, uh, counter which is giving a value modulo value of 8 modulo 8. So, it is counting 8 and when the count of 8 is completed a out an output is uh, triggered okay. an output signal is made active. So, that is how the counter works. So, it keeps a count of the input that is uh, triggering the circuit in a certain manner and internally the state change takes place in such a manner that it gets incremented and when the count a specific count has been achieved an output is uh, activated. Is it clear? So, that is what uh, we understand as a counter circuit more about counter we shall discuss next week. Okay. So, uh, when we talk about this shift register as a counter, so we are using the shift register again uh, uh, you know in a feedback mode and in this case unlike the sequence generator where we are putting a specific sequence we are putting in one example all of them are zeros and only one value is one okay so this is how we are starting and then when so that when one so this is the case over here so this is one and all these values are zero and then with one clock trigger clock trigger is getting now counted here as I said. So, what will happen this one will come over here. So, this is the one right and rest of the values will be 0. So, this 0 is pushed here this 0 is pushed here and this one is getting in it is becoming 1. So, that is what you can see that rest of the values are 0 1 this is 0 this is 0 all of them are 0. One more clock what will happen. 
So, this one will come over here that is what we know as shift register operation we have discussed it in, in the previous classes. Okay. So, next time it will, this one will come here right next time next clock this one will come here and after 8 clock okay, you will see that this one is again appearing over here is not it. So, if you have connected an LED or some output action and all. So, from this point another time when it is getting uh, uh, it is uh, getting a high input okay, and say the LED is glowing then you understand you have you have you can uh, very well say that 8 clock trigger has taken place in between. So, a count of 8 has been completed clear and this can be achieved by any uh, shift register with 8 such flip flop like 74164 uh, you can take and then the feedback can be taken and from that you can achieve the way we have achieved a mod 8 counter. Okay. So, in this case the flip flop output directly the last flip flop output the way you have seen it itself indicates the count of 8 has taken place. right? So, if you uh, have instead of this one right say 0 0 0 1 and 0 0 0 1 initially then what will be the count by this particular uh, shift register. So, one is coming here again one will come here after 4 clock pulses right. So, it will be a mod 4 counter right, but with this ring counter arrangement as many number of flip flops okay, if it is n bit shift register maximum we can get a mod 8 mod n count. Okay. So, that is what is mentioned, okay. but we can get less you know depending on how we are uh, initializing the flip flop clear. Next we look at another uh, type of you know feedback. Uh, by which what we get is called Johnson counter. Okay. So, in Johnson counter this is the flip flop right? and uh, this is the shift register. So, the output of it is inverted and sent as input to the uh, first flip flop. Is it clear? So, serial data out is inverted and fed as input to the input of input uh, serial in input. Okay. Now, if the uh, arrangement is such that shift register is such that inverted output is available at the serial out as uh, serial out then you do not need this extra inverter. So, that inverted output you can feed back okay, as uh, serial in. Okay. So, this is the making of it because of which it is also called switch tail counter or twisted tail counter. Right. Popular name is Johnson counter, but it is also called switch tail counter or twisted tail because tail is twisted I mean it is inverted that is that is the meaning of it. Okay. Now, uh, how this particular uh, circuit works? So, if we initialize it with say 0 0 0 0. Okay. Then uh, we take this example. So, this uh, T T prime is getting fed back as an a serial in. Okay. So, 0 is uh, coming here as 1. Right. So, 1 will go as input and rest these 3 zeros will come here as these 3 zeros. Clear. So, now it is 0. So, what will be coming as input? serial in is 1. So, this one is coming here and this one is getting in. So, this one and these two zeros will be coming as these two zeros. Still it is 0. So, what will be fed back is 1. So, this one is coming here. So, 3 ones and this is 0. Again still it is t is 0. So, what is fed back is 1 t prime. So, this one is coming here and all three ones it is following this three ones this three one is coming here as this three ones. So, 4 ones have become. After that what will happen? This one now fed back as 1 prime which is 0. So, 0 gets in 
this these are three ones then 0 0 gets in these are two ones then 0 0 0 gets in these are one and what next this one will go back so it is zero so all zero so is, this is all zero means again it will get repeated is it fine so what we see in this case that we can we are getting the uh, it is getting repeated the sequence state is getting repeated after 8 clock pulses okay so it can give a count of 8 clock pulses right and this is this is a in that sense uh, with four such flip flop four bit shift register we are getting a mod, uh, count of 8 so modulo number is 8 okay so that is the uh, Johnson counter uh, providing you. So, with n bit shift register it can be extended. So, if it is 5 bit shift register or 8 bit shift register it will be 10 or uh, 16 uh, uh, this uh, count that can be achieved. Okay. Now, uh, as I said uh, we the external world needs to know that when that count of 8 or 10 or 16 has been completed, is not it. So, it is the internal states that are getting circulated that are getting repeated after uh, 8 clock pulses as we have seen, but the outside world need to know right. For that it need to be what is called decoded and uh, the states need to be decoded and made uh, uh, available to the outside world. Okay. So, in ring counter we saw that no other external circuit is required. The output flip flop directly is made can be made available to the outside world and whenever it goes high that means count of 8 has taken place is not it. But in this case if you uh, consider a similar scenario say t is 0 over here over here over here it is 1, but it is remaining 1 again it will become 1 after 4 clock pulses. So, if you only take it from t it is not going to work similarly from, from s from r from q if you try okay, in none of the cases you can see that a modulo uh, a count of 8 okay, can be ensured. But what you can see what you can see right that if you take only say q and t prime right q prime and t prime that means both of them are 0 that is occurring again over here right in between in any of these states it is not uh, your uh, 0 and 0 is not it. So, if you take a uh, uh, logic like this and and then is this output it will become 1 once here again over here after a count of 8 has taken place after 8 clock trigger has taken place is it clear. Okay. Uh, it is possible to have all these four that means q prime r primes s prime t prime right, but that will require a four input gate. So, that is a more complex circuit we are talking about the minimal requirement. So, earlier uh, no external gate is required here we need a gate with a, that is two input uh, a logic gate okay. and we can see other than this q and t prime you can have other combination also. So, for example, this 1 0 okay, q is 1 and r is 0. So, this is again occurring over here. So, once it occurs right it will again occur after 8 clock pulses. So, that could also be a decoding logic is it clear. So, decoding logic for Johnson counter as we have seen in this case requires a two input logic gate. Now, interestingly you can uh, work out it is for 4 bit uh, shift register you can work out for 5 bit shift register, uh, 8 bit shift register any other and for Johnson counter you will see that every case what you would be requiring a only a two input uh, logic gate okay. more than that is not required more than that is not required 
okay, with a two input logic gate even for 5 bit or 8 bit uh, shift register working in Johnson count, uh, counter mode okay, giving you uh, modulo uh, 10, uh, 16 or whatever uh, I mean depending on that number twice the uh, shift register uh, size okay, a two input logic gate is sufficient for decoding. Okay. So, this is uh, the way we uh, can see that it works and you can think of other kind of initialization also and we can see that it is it, it progresses in this manner. Okay. So, with this we uh, come to the conclusion of uh, this class. Uh, what we have seen is that parallel to serial conversion at transmitter end and serial to parallel conversion at receiver end uh, help in reducing number of transmission, transmitter, transmission channels and shift register comes useful there because after parallel to serial conversion then the data is uh, uh, made serially out and uh, there lies its utilite utility. And we also saw that serial data can be appropriate, appropriately delayed by uh, selection of clock period and also the size of the shift register used. Okay. If n bit shift register and t is uh, uh, clock, clock of t uh, time period is used, then n t is the uh, delay, <coughs> delay uh, uh, in this case. With serial uh, data out, uh, feedback directly as serial data in uh, n bit shift register can generate up to n bit long pattern repeatedly. repetitively. So, there you can use uh, shift register as sequence generator and shift register can be used as sequence detector also to identify a specific pattern in the incoming bit stream okay, where we are doing a bit by bit comparison x not gate is used and x not gate outputs are uh, put to a uh, multi input AND gate and that AND gate output is uh, when it goes high that means uh, the pattern is detected. Okay. And n bit uh, shift register in ring counter configuration can act as a modulo n counter and in Johnson counter configuration as modulo 2 n counter. And for ring counter uh, configuration we do not need any decoding logic extra decoding logic, but for Johnson counter we need uh, to input logic gate for decoding purpose. Okay. Thank you.